welcome back. I've been told that I have been dragooned into it. But with a great deal of pleasure to introduce uh, Wang Feng, who will tell us about parallel telescopes. Okay, and thank you. Uh, it's my great honor to uh, speak here, and I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. Okay, and this is a joint work with uh, South Cheng Zhiming Li from China, and Michael Singer, who is here, and uh, uh, Stephen Watt from Canada. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I share is my plan. Uh, first, I will give a brief, very brief introduction on creative telescoping, and then the motivation of, of our work, um, which is a uh, parameterized differential graph theory. And uh, the third part is uh, our main result. Uh, we, uh, introduction, uh, we, we introduce the notion of parallel telescoping, and we uh, solve the exist problem, and uh, we also uh, present uh, Related algorithms. Okay. So, what is creative telescoping? Um, loosely speaking, creative telescoping is a, a methodic to deal with uh, parameterized symbolic sums and uh, integrals that finds uh, linear differential equations or linear difference equations or linear Q difference equations for such uh, sum and integrals. And more precisely, and, uh, give, uh, given a, func a function f, uh, well, the variable t and xi could be a continuous variable, a discrete variable, or a q discrete variables. And uh, creative telescoping is to find a linear uh, non-zero linear uh, differential operators or uh, difference operator or Q different operator uh, L say such that the uh, L F uh, is, is equal to uh, this sum. Well, theta could be the usual uh, derivation uh, difference operator or di Q different operator, and we call such L a telescope for F and the GI certificate for F. Okay. Uh, yeah, here is an example, <coughs> and uh, you will see uh, in this example how creative telescoping is applied to uh, this uh, parameterized integral. And we, we want to uh, evaluate this integral where T is a, a parameter. And we set f, small f, to be this uh, function, and we compute all derivative of this function with respect to t and x, and which are linearly dependent over the field of rational functions in t. And these derivatives are linearly dependent uh, is because this function is definite, and which we will define later. Okay. And in fact, we have this linear relations for F. And this means that uh, uh, this operator, this operator is a telescope for F, and that function is a, a certificate for F. And, uh, and now we uh, integrate both sides of this equation. And uh, then we, we, we get this. <coughs> And uh, uh, note that uh, the, the integral uh, commutes with the derivation and uh, the uh, coefficients in T. So we can move this integral out of the derivation. Yeah. And we get this. And uh, a, good things, a good thing is that uh, the integral on the right hand side of this equation uh, is zero. So we get a linear uh, differential equations. Yeah, these different uh, differential equations for the integral of t. And now we solve these equations. And then the initial conditions allow us to find this uh, integral of t. Okay. So this is a typical example of 
for creative telescoping. And uh, uh, there are some problems in creative telescoping. First one is uh, existing problem. Uh, it asks if uh, if given a function, uh, teles uh, if telescopers uh, always easy, the answer is no. In general, it it, it depends on uh, the, the given function. Okay, and there are many results on these uh, equations, and this result uh, will prove that uh, for some uh, particular uh, particular class of functions, uh, telescopers always easy or or they give uh, sufficient and necessary condition like guarantee the existence <coughs> of uh, telescopers. Another problem is uh, uh, about uh, computation. That's how to compute a telescope if it exists. And here are some uh, algorithms, such as uh, Sixter Settings algorithm, Zellberg's algorithm, Takayama's algorithm, and Shizak's algorithm, and Kuchin's method. And recently, uh, some uh, uh, efficient, more efficient, uh, efficient algorithms are developed based on uh, omit reduction. Okay. And in this talk, we will focus on the following problem. And now we, we are given uh, not uh, one function, but uh, m functions, say f1, <coughs> f2, and fm. And we try to find a nonlinear a uh, non-zero, sorry, non-zero linear differential operator L and a function G such that L of i is equal to the derivative of G with respect to X i for all i from 1 to m. And this means that uh, this uh, function of i share the same uh, certificate G. And, and actually we have some uh, restrictions on uh, certificate G, and you will see later. Okay, and uh, this problem is motivated by uh, parameterized directional power theory. And yeah, and yesterday, uh, Carlos uh, has uh, introduced the general uh, parameterized uh, differential power theory. And here we only focus on the first order equations. And let small k be the uh, be a differentially closed field with uh, the elevation dt. And for safe, uh, let's <coughs> assume that the, the characteristic of k is zero. And the capital K, let capital K be the rational function in m variables x1, x2, xm, and with coefficients in small k. Okay? And uh, we consider this. Uh, uh, first order uh, equations and let cow f be a uh, parameterized PKWS extension and cow g be the gamma group of these equations that is the set of uh, k automorphism and which commutes all uh, elevation. And uh, for such uh, first order Equation and thank uh, Phillips and William. We have let the, the Gaia group is of this special form is determined by a linear differential operator. And we will call this linear differential operator a defining operator for the Gaia group. Okay. So, how this theory <laughs> is related to our work? Is the following lemma. Let L be a defining operator for the Gaia group G, then raise a rational function uh, small g such that L of i is equal to the derivative of G with respect to X i. Okay. And the proof is, is simple. 
Let's small j be a fundamental match with let's an element in the a non-zero element in the pick our cell tension, and it solve this equation, and then we have let a lot of i. In this case, your own additive group, yeah, additive group. Uh, yes. Can you write your original equations? So these are these are. Can you write? Like the oh. Ah, okay, so it's unadditive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, okay, thanks. <coughs> yeah, uh, we, we have that a lot of i is equal to the derivative of a lot j with respect to x i. So it still is to show that a lot j is a rational function. Okay. And uh, it's easy to verify that the uh, and all J is fixed by all elements in the Gawa group. So the Gawa correspondent implies that log J is a rational function. Okay. So this lemma motivates us to consider the following problem. And yeah, but uh, here we uh, consider not only rational functions, but also uh, functions in a larger class called uh, definite <coughs> functions. Which I um, uh, give the definition now, and let uh, how R be the ring of this ring of differential operators, and uh, whose uh, uh, multiplication rule are as follows: <laughs> the all, deli all derivation are commutative, and in general, the derivation and elements in the capital K are not commutative. Okay. And let capital S be a subset of uh, this ring, and we will denote by uh, Ks, the sub of this ring generated by uh, capital X or <coughs> K. Yeah, it's just a notation. Okay. <coughs> And now an element H is said to be definite over the capital K if for each I from zero to M, well, uh, X zero is just T, okay? And where is uh, a non-zero element L I in, uh, in the sub-algebra generated by a single derivation DXI such that L I H is zero. So this means that uh, H is a solution of linear uh, partial differential equations uh, whose solution space is of finite dimension. Some examples like rational <laughs> function, exponential function, and algebraic functions are all finite. Uh, definite function have have the following uh, properties, uh, closure property. And if f1, f2 are definite, then the sum and products are also definite. And uh, moreover, for any elements talk in the ring of differential operator, we have talk f1 is also definite. And so the set of definite function is uh, an R module, and we will use uh, RF to denote the R module generated by F. And now here is our parallel telescopy. And we are given the different functions f1, f2, fm. And we try to find a, a non-zero linear differential operator at all in dt with coefficients in small k uh, such that l of one is equal to the derivative of g uh, with respect to xi. And here we require G is an element in the sub module, uh, sub module generated by F1, F2, and Fm. Okay. And the uh, subject at all is called a parallel telescope for uh, these functions of I. And you may ask if a parallel telescope always easy? The answer is no. Okay. And let's see an example. Let f1, f2 be these two uh, functions, definite functions, and assume that L was a parallel telescope for them. 
that an easy calculation implies that we have a, uh, at all will will kill this uh, exponential function. At least it is impossible because we here we have a uh, uh, variable x two, and it, this exponential function cannot uh, be killed by a linear uh, differential operators in dt and with coefficients in small k. Okay, so the conclusion is that there, there is no parallel type discover for these two functions. And uh, in the following, we will give uh, sufficient and necessary conditions for the existence of a parallel telescope for definite functions. Okay. And yeah, here is a, a sufficient conditions. And uh, we with uh, and the uh, definite functions f1, f2, fm are said to be compatible with respect to x if they satisfy these uh, equations. And uh, then we have this theorem if f1, f2, fm are compatible, then they have a parallel telescope. And actually, this theorem follows from a theorem in the book named uh, Ring of Linear Dependent Operators. And that theorem is about, uh, on, it's on uh, the finite needs of some cohomology group. And but here we shall present a constructive proof. And yeah, for, for this proof, we need uh, two lemmas. The first one is the Lipschitz lemma. And this lemma set states that if f is the definite, then for any uh, subset, the capital S in, in this set, and which consists of m plus one uh, elements, then there is uh, a non-zero elements in uh, the sub-algebra generated by the capital S, such that LF is zero. Okay. And the proof given by Lipschitz is constructive, and we can find uh, this operator at all by only solving a linear system with coefficients uh, in small k. Okay. Next is a capital uh, technical lemma. And this lemma uh, states that there actually there is a, a special operator P that uh, annihilate a definite function F. And let f be definite and uh, capital I be a subset of this set <coughs> and then one can find a non-zero non operator P of this form such that P f is zero. Well, and all is a non-zero linear differential operator in dt with coefficients in small k and m, i, and j are uh, elements, uh, are operators with uh, uh, polynomial coefficients in Xi, and moreover, Nj is free of Xi and Dxi for all, for all i in the capital I. Okay. And we have for two corollary of this lemma. The first one is that if f is definite, then there is a, a non-zero error, such that error f can be uh, uh, written as the sum of uh, the sum of derivative of gi with respect to xi. Okay. The second corollary is that if f1, f2, fm are definite and compatible, then, then there is a non-zero error such that L of F1 is uh, equal to the derivative of G with respect to X1 for some G in this submodule. And this corollary is uh, the base step of our constructive <coughs> proof of the main theory. Okay. 
I, I'm not going to uh, give a proof of this lemma here, but give an example, and well, you will see the idea of the proof. And let's assume that m is 2. And let f be a definite function defined by these three uh, operators. And we take the capital I be the, uh, the set of uh, uh, a single elements, one. And our goal is to construct a non-zero operator P and uh, subtract PF is zero. Well, the capital N is free of X1 and DX1. Okay. The first step, let the capital S be this set, and then we, by a uh, Lipschitz construction, we find a non zero element P bar in this sub algebra sub to let P bar F is zero. Here we have P bar. It's this operator. And then to, to get the P, we only need to multiply P bar by a suitable monomial in uh, XI and D XI. Okay. So how to get uh, the monomial? We write P bar uh, in this form. This means that we first write uh, P bar as a polynomial in DX1. And here, mu is the lowest uh, degree. And then we, we write the coefficients in uh, DX1 to the power mu in, as a polynomial in X2. And here, nu is the uh, the highest degree. Okay. And uh, yeah, here we have uh, mu equals 1 and nu equals 2. And L1, uh, sorry, L2 is minus 1 and L1 is this operator. L2 is dt square and m bar is dt. Okay, now, now we, we want to uh, kill the monomial dx1 and x2 square. And for this, we, we only need to, need to multiply p bar by the monomial dx2 square and x1. And then we get the, uh, the operator we, we want that is p. Here you can see that the capital N is freed of x1 and dx1. <coughs> So now we are ready to give our constructive proof. The first step is uh, we use corollary two and find a uh, non-zero uh, operator L1 such that L1 F1 is equal to the derivative of G1 with respect to X1. Okay. And then we set fi tilt to be uh, L1 of i minus d uh, minus the derivative minus dx i g1 for all i from 2 to m. And we we can verify that uh, this uh, fi tilt are free of uh, x1 and uh, they are also compatible. So by induction, we can compute a parallel uh, telescoper for this Fi tilt, let's say L2. And then <coughs> L, which is the product of L2 and L1, <coughs> uh, then it's a parallel telescoper for this Fi. Okay. So from this proof, we have a <coughs> The following algorithm that uh, uh, given compatible definite functions, uh, it will input a parallel telescope at all. Okay, and uh, and we have uh, implemented 
uh, this algorithm for hyper exponential functions uh, in Maple and implement uh, implementation is available on this ring. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's let's again take an example. Let f one, f two, f f m, f three be this uh, definite functions, and they are compatible. And first, we we find a non-zero element L one such that L one f one is uh, dx1 g1, where l1 is this operator, g1 is this function. And then we set uh, l2 tilde in this, and l3 tilde in this. And you can see both of them are free of x1. And now we compute a parallel telescope uh, for f2 tilde and f3 tilde. L2 is dt, and then the parallel telescope for this for f1, f2, f3 is this L, and g is a certificate. Okay. Okay. Now, now we we have we know that the, if d finite functions are compatible, then they will have a parallel tel telescope. Uh, the following example. Uh, shows that uh, the compatibility may not be necessary. Okay. Let the F1 uh, be X2 and F2 be X3 and Fm be X1. And we can easily verify that they are not compatible, but uh, <coughs> because uh, dt Fi is zero, so dt is a parallel telescope for them. Okay. <coughs> Then we have the following result. This give a sufficient and necessary condition. Uh, the F is defined, defined, and then they have a parallel telescope if and only if there is a non zero uh, linear operate, differential operator P such that PF1, PF2, and PFM are compatible. And uh, yeah, this is our <laughs> main result. And uh, uh, it's well, the following two problems is well known in uh, Gawa theory. Uh, one direct problem uh, how to compute the Gawa groups. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the inverse problem what group can occur as a Gawa group. And we will apply our result uh, to. Uh, these two problems for first order equations. Okay. Yeah, consider these first order equations. Then we have that L is a defining operator for the gamma group G, if and only if L is a parallel telescope for the coefficients of these equations of minimal order. So so calculating the Gawa group G is reduced to computing a parallel telescope of minimal order. And I would like to remark that uh, there uh, have already uh, been several algorithms for uh, to compute the uh, parameterized differential Gawa groups, uh, such as uh, and uh, Thomas and Carlos uh, method for the first order and second order equations, and uh, Andrew, Alexei, Michael's method for the reductive group, and uh, Charlotte, Andrew, and Alexei's result for some special D module. And here is a simple. For example, let's consider this uh, first order equations. And uh, our goal is to find a parallel telescope of minimal order. And we observe that uh, this lateral function is not equal to uh, the derivative of any 
rational functions with respect to x1. So the parallel telescope at all, the order of parallel telescope must be greater than zero. Okay. And uh, on, the, on the other hand, sorry. Uh, on the other hand, we have these uh, two equations. This implies that <coughs> dt is a parallel telescope. So dt is a parallel telescope of minimal order. Then our uh, lemma implies that the above group of the above system is uh, uh, determined by dt. So a, a small modification of uh, the previous algorithm will allow us to compute a <laughs> parallel telescope of minimal order for rational functions. Uh, yes. Now the inverse problem uh, is uh, the additive group G A K, the Gawa group of uh, following systems and assume that the answer was yes. And then let it all be a parallel telescope for uh, the coefficients of i. Then we have left for any element c in this action pool, we have all c is zero. But we know that uh, the solution that the solution space of L is of finite dimension because L is non-zero. But as a vector space, as a C vector space, uh, the dimension of K is uh, infinite. So we get a contradiction. Well, well the capital C is a con constant field of the small K. <clears throat> so the answer is no. Yeah, I know that when M is Swan and Phillips and Michael showed in 2006 and six that any proper dependent algebraic subgroup of this attitude group is a Gaia <coughs> group, but the attitude group GAK itself is not. Right. Yeah. And by an argument similar to the above, and we can show that the uh, uh, multi uh, multiplicative group GMK is uh, not the Gawa group of uh, parameterized differential equations too. Okay. And okay, we we are almost done. Uh, we can restate. Our result in the language of differential form. Well, the differential form means that uh, an expression, expression of this form with coefficients of uh, in, <coughs> in the set of definite functions over k. We will denote this set by uh, the cow d. And know that uh, in, uh, this expression does not involve dt because we view t as a parameter. And let omega be a differential L form, then the uh, exterior derivative is defined as the usual. But let L be a linear differential operator in dt, and we define L omega to the application of L to the coefficients of uh, is differential form. And now, now we, we, we say omega is dt closed. If there is a non-zero at all, such that L omega is closed. And omega is dt exact. If there is a non-zero at all, such that L omega <coughs> is exact. And if omega is dt exact, then we call such L is uh, uh, Call subject law a telescope for omega. And we know that uh, if omega be a, uh, is a differential one form, 
then omega is closed if and only if uh, its coefficients are compatible. So we can restate this theorem in the language of differential form. Let omega be a differential one form, then omega is dt closed if and only if it's dt z. And this result can be generalized to the general differential form. Here I see that omega is a differential error form, then omega is dt closed, if and only if it's dt z. Uh, the proof, the case at all, uh, equals 1, just follow from this, this theorem. And the general case, just use uh, induction on at all. Okay. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Yes. So you um, you wrote a result that says that GA is not a parameter scalar group for for the systems. GA is. Uh, do you, do you, you that every proper subgroup of GA is a scalar group for a system like this? Where uh, GA is a. Uh, you mean a subgroup uh, about the, the, the attitude group? Ah, uh, the attitude. Group G A is uh, the. Sorry, could, could you repeat your question? Yes. Um, uh, do you do you already know all the all the subgroups of the additive group that arise as Galo groups in this more general? You mean any subgroup, not not just uh, a <laughs> differential algebraic subgroup? You mean? No, which which are the differential groups that occur as Galo groups? Of systems like the ones you're considering. Uh -huh. uh, yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, um, as uh, results in this algebraic form. Uh, sorry. You are fi uh, algebraic. F i are algebraic, are algebraic functions, right? Yeah, because uh, yeah, algebraic functions are definite, so so we yeah. Other questions? Speaker again.